हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू लेसन नंबर फोर मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ रिसोर्सेस इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन अबाउट व्हाट आर रिसोर्सेस व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रिसोर्सेस एंड व्हाट इज़ द मीनिंग ऑफ मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ रिसोर्सेस सो रिसोर्स मोबिलाइजेशन बेसिकली मीन्स यू नो एलोकेटिंग और हारनेसिंग द अवेलेबल रिसोर्सेज इन अ कंट्री फॉर अचीविंग अवर इकोनॉमिक गोल्स टू अचीव इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ फॉर नेशनल डेवलपमेंट to generate employment whatever are the different goals uh, and whatever is the available resources so we have to properly allocate them efficiently manage them that entire process is called resource mobilization in this video we are going to see about what are the different key components of resource mobilization and what are the various challenges of resource mobilization so let us first see what are the components of resource mobilization so the first one is mobilizing the financial resources so financial resource mobilization uh financial resources basically they come from either as a tax revenue that is you know taxes so this is to finance the public expenditure and infrastructure development this is what the government is taxing it includes both direct and indirect taxes then savings and investments so this is the savings by uh, the corporates as well as by the individuals whatever they are saving uh, through financial routes through the various channels like bank or you know stock markets it is getting channelized into investment so financial institutions to mobilize domestic savings and investments and foreign direct investment basically this is the money which is coming from outside to our country so this is all this also becomes our resource then we also do some borrowing uh it can be domestic borrowing through rbi through domestic markets or international sources to fund large scale projects uh these may also include the borrowing from you know uh, adb world bank etc so these are the various ways in which the financial resources are mobilized so uh, this is one way of looking at resource mobilization second one is human resource mobilization so basically you know how we can mobilize our human resources properly skill development is an important component in that that which will enhance the labor productivity so that more production can happen per unit of labor and we also need to look at employment generation when we when we call human resource mobilization third one is natural resource mobilization so important part here is its sustainable use for example if we have minerals or forests or water land etc which are the natural resources we need to use them sustainably judiciously so exploiting resources like minerals forests water responsibly to maximize their economic value so that you know there is intra and intergenerational equity when we use the natural resources export revenue as a source of foreign exchange right like oil gas so we also get a lot of export revenue if we have natural resources with us then capital resource mobilization infrastructure development channeling funds into physical infrastructure like roads energy communication systems to support economic activities and also public private partnerships so this is how we mobilize our capital resource and develop our capital resource technological advancement also comes here to improve efficiency basically the more technological uh, advanced a country is the more uh, efficient the capital becomes so uh, basically it is to improve the efficiency what is the role of uh, you know resource mobilization in uh, in the economic development so we'll see that here so it boosts gdp it supports public services encourages private sector growth also it reduces dependency on foreign aid so these are the obvious um, uh, you know uh, benefits of uh, efficient resource mobilization what are the challenges in resource mobilization this is an important part for us uh, first one first one is inequitable distribution basically the distribution of resources may not be uniform may not be homogeneous throughout the country there may be concentration of uh, resources in certain regions or among certain groups so some people may have more uh, resources at their disposal so this is basically inequality of resources which is called inequitable distribution 
then some regions means some states they have more resources at their disposal so when we talk about resources it is not just natural resources it is human resources capital resources financial resources also then resource scarce is another problem so resource scarce basically means that one country if it has a lot of natural resources then if it it happens that it completely depends on that resource only so for example you know there there is a country say a which has uh, oil and natural gas okay so it its economy is completely dependent on oil and natural gas now it is so much dependent on oil and natural gas that it has not diversified its economy so they they have not diversified into tourism into exports into manufacturing agriculture etc so you know what happens that if at all some problem comes into the market of oil and natural gas then this country will face a uh, financial trouble so that is called resource scarce over reliance on natural resources can limit diversification and it also results into you know excessive um, uh, you know exchange rate for that country which further uh, uh, you know discourages exports of other product so that is another problem then environmental degradation happens so um, you know unsustainable resource extraction can lead to ecological collapse example deforestation water shortages etc so we are already facing water shortage in our country ground water depletion is a real problem today so you must be seeing this in the current affairs also that many cities they face uh, drinking water problem many regions of the country which used which previously used to have drinking water or water for irrigation or farming purpose now the water levels have dropped significantly underdeveloped human resources lack of education and skills reduces the productivity of workforce so this is another challenge it is not very easy to have a productive workforce at our disposal let us look at some of the case studies here okay i have put some case studies uh, about the uh, you know resources that are available and how it can be efficiently used india's demographic dividend demographic dividend means that we have maximum number of people in the working age group so we have 65% of the population under 35 meaning young population india has immense potential to harness its human resources for growth provided there is adequate investment in skill development and education so this is the strength that we have the demographic dividends but this demographic dividend doesn't turn into a demographic disaster for that we need to ensure that education and skill development is given adequate care is given adequate attention to okay so we need to invest in skill development and education only then this uh, you know this young population will be of use to our country it will be actually mobilized properly second is japan's capital efficiency so despite limited natural resources japan does not have a lot of natural resources japan has invested in human capital and technology which has transformed it into leading global economy so how japan became such a big economy because it has invested heavily into its human capital meaning their skills and education and also in technology so japanese technology is one of the finest in the world so that is how you know they have gained their capital efficiency and that is how they are working upon their available resources which is capital so they have increased the efficiency of their capital by investing in human capital and also uh through technological advancements then next one is the norway's uh, resource wealth management effective policies to manage the oil wealth have resulted into consistent economic growth and high living standards so basically how to handle the natural resource that case study can be done through norway so these are some of the examples now in order to have effective resource mobilization it is essential to have sustainable use of natural resources this is an important word sustainable use focusing on renewable energy and circular economies okay so renewable energy basically means solar energy wind energy right these are renewable energy and circular economies is a concept whereby you know uh, we focus more on recycling the by product or waste product of one sector so basically um, you know the economy works in a circular way whereby the by product or waste product of one um, sector is used as an input to another sector and the wastage is reduced economic efficiency is increased 
and it is to have uh, to have skill development initiatives to enhance employability and productivity right we need to do all this we have to encourage fdi so that maximum foreign resources can be brought we have to also have domestic investments in critical sectors and to have a balanced regional development so that there is no disparity so this is uh, you know uh, this is about the mobilization of resources we'll continue it in the next video also thank you